I'm going to tell you some things about learning data science that aren't necessarily going to make me the most popular. But if you're a brand new data scientist or you're just trying to break into the field for the first time, these are probably things you need to hear. I'm Richard and this is Richard on Data. So the internet is littered with videos and medium articles about learning data science fast. Maybe you can learn data science in six months, maybe even three months, or just straight up fast. And wouldn't that be great? I mean, I get why people sell this idea for multiple reasons. Data science is both a very nebulous concept, but also a very lucrative career path. So if you're able to boil down exactly what it is, learn the key concepts, and then use that as a launching point to get a really good career going, that would obviously be pretty fantastic. But as the saying goes, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. The world can be a very complex and messy place. And that goes for data science and the process of learning it too. So I'm gonna try to give you the most realistic possible picture of what the journey of actually learning data science will look like, as well as the stumbling blocks you're likely to run into. And the uncomfortable truth about learning data science is that it's not something that you can just do in three months or six months or really even in a year. In fact, it's not even really a singular act. It's more of a mentality or a process. But we'll talk more about that. Now, just as a disclaimer before we get started, I am not a licensed career counselor. I'm just a data scientist who makes videos and who has opinions. So just bear that in mind. Take this video as just some helpful food for thought as well as for entertainment purposes. And then before we get started, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and please take half a second to smash the like button, because that really does help my content reach a larger audience. Also, if you guys would be willing to support my channel, I'll have links in the description to my Patreon account and my crypto wallet addresses. Your support is highly appreciated. So before we talk about the challenges with learning data science, we have to address the fact that everybody's data science experience is different. If you work at a major tech company, your experience with data science is likely to be vastly different than somebody who works in, let's say, healthcare or pharma. And then let's suppose you're in the United States. Even things like the region and the local job market that you're in are likely to strongly influence your data science experience. Like for example, are you in the Midwest? Are you in Silicon Valley? Are you in New York City? Those are all going to lend to different sorts of experiences. At your company, you might have more process or less process. You might be really heavy into statistics, or you might not really see how statistics gets applied from day to day at all. Maybe your company is really heavy into AI. Maybe it's really heavy into interactive visualizations. It all really depends. This truly is one of the biggest challenges with prescribing learning pathways for data science because there's not even really a unanimous, agreed upon definition of data science, and because experiences in it vary so widely, there really is no one size fits all sort of approach to learning it. And keep in mind, I've done my own video on a proposed study pathway for data science, and the link to that will be in the description. But even to my own video, there are a number of caveats to it. For example, you really have to think about the type of data scientist that you want to be. So you do have to get some fundamentals down, but after that, there is a little bit of flexibility. There are some universal things that I think a very high percentage of data science jobs are going to expect you to know. Specifically, I think those things are statistics, SQL, and at least one of R and Python. After that point, you can learn more programming languages, you can learn linear algebra, you can learn user experience, machine learning, cloud computing, whatever the case may be, you definitely have some options depending on the type of data scientist that you want to be and where you perceive your own interests or weaknesses to be. Another layer to this is maybe you want to be somebody who has a pretty broad knowledge of several topics that is more of a generalist, 
or you're somebody with a deeper knowledge of fewer things, that is, a specialist. I've also talked about this in a separate video. But in almost all circumstances, no matter what it is that you do, you're going to end up being a data scientist who can't get every possible job out there, but who's going to be massively valuable and employable to the right company. Now let's take a step back here for a second. If you're trying to learn data science, that means you're probably either in school or you're working some other kind of job and you're just learning things either at that job or kind of on the side on your own time. Probably later down the road, you'll break into an entry level or associate level data science job, or perhaps you'll make some kind of lateral transition. And unfortunately, when you're getting your first data science job, usually the options aren't exactly endless. It's a little bit harder than it would be with a little bit more experience, but that's okay because all you need is to find that one company. Almost everybody eventually can find that one company where you can finally kick things off. But even then, you are probably going to have to go through some kind of technical screening. You might get asked about some concept in statistics, or what some statement in SQL means, or how you would solve some problem using R or Python, or maybe something else completely different altogether. And now this is the point where I'd really like you to think and to be as brutally honest with yourself as you possibly can. With these types of technical screenings, and they are pretty common, which type of person do you think is going to have the higher chance of success with them? Somebody who's covered a pretty broad number of topics over the span of like three to six months, or somebody who's practiced and applied these things for a much longer period of time. Now, far be it from me to give credence to those companies that demand a ridiculous and artificial number of years of experience in various programming languages, because many of those people are pretty silly in their own right. But you'd also probably never expect somebody to become fluent in a foreign language in, let's say, three to six months either. Granted, programming languages are easier than that, but it's not that far off. So why am I making this video anyway? Is it to attack or to make fun of people who are promising results in learning data science in a short period of time? No, it's not that at all. I'm sure that in many programs or videos where people lay out those kinds of pathways, there's a lot of value there. And I am all about efficiency. You should strive to do more with less, in ways that make sense, of course. But it's to emphasize the point that the process of learning is not some concrete thing that starts at some point and then ends at a later point. It's something that never really truly ends. It doesn't even end when you break into data science and get your first job. Why? Because no job is permanent. You might get bored of your company. You might want to move to a different industry because you want to try something different. You might get laid off, or maybe you want to move away for personal reasons. Things happen, but if you end up lacking skills that are valuable in the broader data science marketplace, you could end up needlessly excluding yourself from amazing opportunities out there. Granted, once you're working a job, you shouldn't be in overdrive, like killing yourselves on nights and weekends trying to learn things on the side. You've got a job, you can pump the brakes a little bit. You should be methodical and try to focus on one or maybe two things at a time. Don't try to take too much on or you could end up burning yourself out or not really learning things efficiently in the first place. But every year or every few months or so, you should be able to take a written inventory of the new skills that you've learned, the additional months or years of experience you have at different things, whether that's R or Python or anything else, as well as just to take stock in the interesting projects and tasks that you've worked on. If you find yourself unable to do that, that's a giant red flag and problem. So just to bring everything here full circle, I think that everybody watching this video intrinsically understands that data science is an incredibly rewarding and lucrative career path. But you do have to know what kind of data scientist that you are, or at least the kind of data scientist you want to be, based on your own interests and strengths and weaknesses, and to be honest with yourself. 
It's helpful to have your eye on the market just to see the kind of opportunities that are out there and to identify the ones that appeal most to you, as well as to get some idea of the types of skills and experience level that's required. It's frankly never been easier to do that now that we're in this sort of era of remote work. And even if some of these opportunities are out of reach right now, maybe they won't be in a year or a few years. You will maximize your chance of landing those opportunities, and by extension of that, having the most fulfilling work possible that pays you the most by continuously learning. The more you've learned and the more you've actually gotten to apply the things you've learned, the more opportunities there will be available to you. And again, by extension, that means the more profitable you're likely to be. And that's why learning does not stop after three or six months or even after you've gotten the first job that you want. It's almost a cliche, but it's true that if you're not growing, you're dying. So now that's all well and good, but how do you actually learn data science? Well, you do that by subscribing to my channel, obviously. No, but in all seriousness, ideally you take the right courses in school, or if you're working a job, hopefully that gives you some opportunities to learn various things that are useful for data science. Obviously that's not always an option for everybody. So if that's not for you, then you want to gain some exposure to the fundamental topics. Coursera courses are a fantastic way of doing that, or alternatively, there are some amazing books out there for data science. I'll have links to some great ones in the description of this video. And you also want to practice the things you've learned. Again, if you have a job in which you're able to do this, that's ideal, but if not, Kaggle challenges are way better than nothing, and they provide you a great opportunity to learn the things that you didn't realize you didn't know. It really is a marathon, not a sprint. But if you commit to just taking that first step, getting started, and then making learning a habit, you are going to be successful. I can pretty much guarantee that. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, smash the like button. Then let me know in the comments down below what you thought. Did you agree with me? Did you disagree with me? Let me know. Then I'll see you all in the not-so-distant future. Until then, Richard on Data.